Hello, squirrels. You like my new bob? Used to always wear my hair like this when I talk. Well, not always, but towards the end. Towards the end before I retired. You know it's a wig. My hair's back here behind. I can't get all this up in here. <laughs> so I can't wear it for real, for real. Unless I got one of those caps that you put on underneath. I am so sorry that I have been remiss in reading. It's been... Oh, Lordy. It's just been me. It's just... I got no good excuse except my cataracts are a pain in the butt. Truthfully. And the allergies makes, makes them tear and stuff. But I could have. I could have, should have, would have. But I'm here to do it now. And it's only 9.42. I just left Joe's Sunday fun day. And some wonderful person. And I wanted to thank him. But I don't know who gave it to me. She or she, somebody won. Disney princess or princesses amigurumi kit. I don't know that I'll use it. It may be. Uh, what is this? Chapter 22. This ain't right. This is in the second book. Take me to where I want to go. Hang on, y'all. Hold tight. This is a three book set. Okay. Wings and Broken Things. Okay. Wings and Broken Things. Okay. And what did we read? Chapters one and two? I think we're on three. Let me see. Of course, you'll see it, you know. After the fact, you'll see. Was I reading from the other one before? I must have been. Excuse me, I'll, while I find my place. While I find my place. All right, this is okay. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Yeah, casserole was a pot belly pig. Yeah, we on chapter three. And it's the last thing we read was uh, Let's see. I'll I'll go back and read the uh, yo, Doc Leto had been hit. He's the uh vet. And a hard edge in Eric's voice and the menacing energy drifting off him in waves sends a very non-wintry chill down my spine beneath that soft Andy Taylor. Folks, the exterior lurks a soldier who's had to make hard decisions and will make them again. Good day, Moon. As a delicious distraction, that is Eric, stalks down the street toward his cruiser I become... become uncomfortably aware of the melting snow trickling down the inside of my boots and possibly even my pants. In addition to the freezing wetness, my feet are throbbing with fatigue. Oh, I know that feeling. Looks like my life of leisure in Pincherry has softened my edge after a busy day on my feet at the diner. Remember she helped out because Doc Lido is Tally's brother, I believe they said. So, uh, and she was going to go see him. So she says, seems like my trip to the hospital can wait until tomorrow. Okay, now we're caught up. Chapter three. Haven't had the unique experience of reading the local paper yesterday, which is the first time she'd done that. I decide for a repeat with today's breakfast. There are only three of us at Myrtle's Diner this morning. And someone has abandoned his or her paper at one end of the four tops which I guess is the seats at the counter. I uh, pick it up, slide into a booth, and smooth it out on the silver fleck white Formica top. Top story, Missing Angel Breaks Widow's Heart. 
It seems that a three-foot-high memorial statue containing the ashes of Oslo Jorgensen was stolen from the front porch of Olga Jorgen- Jorgensen on Saturday night. The article goes on to explain that the angel was a custom-ordered memorial which contained the ashes of the woman's dearly departed husband. The inscription read, On angels' wings you were born away, but in my heart you shall always stay. So, remember what the book is called, Angel Wings and Broken Things? I lean back and take a long, comfortable, comforting sip of my hot java. Who would steal a memorial? Did they know the husband's ashes were inside? Is it vandalism or just theft? There's no place, no photo of the stolen statuary. Statuary? Maybe. But the image that accompanies the story is far more haunting. Just footprints in the snow leading away from her house. Reminds me of a poem, however, this time it would appear the thief carried the angel. There's some sort of marking. Tally slides my plate onto the table and interrupts my musing. So Tally's back. I inhale deeply. That smells delicious. I think Odell was seriously off his game without you yesterday. I know he's happy to have you back. How's Lido doing? Tally nods her head rapidly in the tight flame red bun perched on top bobs with it. He's doing real good, you know. The doctors say, her voice catches in her throat, and I put a hand on her arm. I didn't mean to upset you, Tally. I'm so sorry about what happened. I know they're doing everything they can for him, and I heard that one of the veterinarians over in Broken Rock is going to come up twice a week until Lito's back on his feet. I realized my mistake too late. Tally's eyes fill with tears and she scurries into the back room. I want to smack my forehead on the table back on his feet. Such an idiot. The poor doctor will probably be, that's what I was thinking, paralyzed from the waist down because of the thoughtless motorist who left him to die in the street. And I say, back on your feet, or back on his feet. I suddenly lose my appetite. Odell wanders out from the kitchen and quietly slips onto the bench seat across the table from me. Don't beat yourself up, kid. Tally knows you mean well. Lido's always taking care of her. She's going to take a while. I lean forward and whisper, I feel like such an idiot. Don't sweat it. Eat your breakfast and then go go figure out who did this to him. That's the best thing you could do for Tally right now. Odell slides out of the booth, wraps his knuckle on the table twice, and saunters back into the kitchen. I love Odell. I can just salute with the spatula. Uh, That's the best thing. I walked out of the dining room. Oh, wait a minute. He's right. That's the best thing I can do for Tally right now. A good portion of my appetite is restored by Odell's encouraging words. I eat half my scrambled eggs and all my home fries. Draining the last of my coffee, I nod my thanks and walk out of the diner. On my return trip to the bookshop, I notice all the footprints in the packed snow covering the sidewalk. Mostly different deep-treaded winter boots, I guess, but there's the occasional smooth-soled Dress shoe, dress shoe, and of course my tennis shoes with their cheap generic logo in the arch. That's what it was. The marking left by that shoe in the snow. The photo in the paper wasn't very clear, but maybe if I go down to the Penn Cherry Harbor Post main office, I can get a look at the original digital file. Maybe even enlarge it. I mean, on TV, they can enlarge images a thousand percent without any loss of resolution. So it can't be that hard. If I can see what brand of shoes the thief was wearing, then I can figure out who stole that angel. Hold on. I don't have time to get involved in statuary. I guess I'm reading that right. Theft. I need to stay focused and figure out who could run a man down in the middle of a snowstorm and leave him for dead on the road. 
That's my primary mission. After I change my clothes and add a proper winter coat, Grams informs me that I'll have to take the Jeep. Having one car was news to me, but learning that one does not drive one's 1957. I didn't know it was a 57. Mercedes 300 SL with gullwing doors during the winter months. Mind blown. And where will I find this Jeep? It's two garages, two garages down toward the lake from the Mercedes. Same access code. Do I want to know what's in the middle garage or do I have to wait for another season? Grams laughs and shakes her head. I honestly don't remember. It might be artwork or books or maybe clothes. She floats lazily toward the window and gazes out over the frozen lake. I think some of my life is getting fuzzy, Mitzi. Do you think that's how it starts? First, I forget a couple of harmless details and eventually it's all gone. Her tone worries me. Grams, come on. You said yourself you're well and truly stuck here. I think the dead only vanish once they're forgotten and I'm still getting to know you. So what if you forgot the contents of one of your ancillary garages? You're here. I'm here. What is it you always say? One day at a time, right? Tears spring from her eyes as she closes the distance between us. Oh, Mitzi, I don't deserve you. I awkwardly give her a ghost hug until I can figure out a way to get you an afterlife, afterlife handkerchief I'll call this even deal. She snuffles and wipes at her translucent cheeks. Deal. I'm off to the hospital. Wish me luck. I casually wonder where the keys are to the other car. Keys are tucked in the visor. I almost point to my lips and scold her for thought dropping, but I did actually need an answer to that unspoken question. As much as it pains me to admit it, the best place to start my investigation of the hit and run is by interviewing the sole witness to the crime. Unfortunately, I've always had a strong aversion to illness in hospitals. It's not that I personally have any issue with sick people, but growing up in foster care has left me with a general distrust of institutions. I had been living with foster mom number three and finally finding a tiny bit of comfort after my mother's fatal car accident when I got jumped by a gang of kids on my way home from school. They had only meant to fright me, but my fight-or-flight instinct was stuck on high alert, and I overreacted. I ran like a girl possessed and and tripped and fell down an embankment. In addition to the cuts and bruises, I broke my left arm. I never found out who called the ambulance, but when I woke up in the hospital, there were two policemen and a woman from Child Protective Service discussing my new placement. Oh, get off there. Get off. Off, off, off. Okay. Oh, and now, okay. Foster family number four was unquestionably one of the worst experiences of my young life. And ever since, I've been less than thrilled with hospitals. However, I'm a big girl now, so I better put on the big girl panties, get over to the hospital, and see if Lido can remember anything. Despite my courageous pep talk on the drive over, my lack of confidence with winter driving combined with unpleasant childhood memories produces a state of agitation. By the time I arrive at the Birch County region, regional medical facility. As I approach the nurse's station, I hesitate and worry they might not let me in because I'm not family. Before I can make my cowardly exit, the friendly, efficient woman behind the counter notices me. Who are you here to see, miss? Dr. Toledo, my voice lacks any of the confidence necessary to convince her I'm a relative. 
And in that moment, I also realized I have no idea of the doctor's last name, just a funny anecdote about he and his sisters uh, are all named after the towns of their conceptions. A story shared by Twiggy, possibly untrue and definitely inappropriate for this setting. And your pet's name? My jaw drops and I gape at the woman for a solid ten seconds. My what? She chuckles. Lido has had visits from several pet owners. It seems that he's better at remembering the pet's names than their people's. So he's asked us to introduce his guest by the name of their furry friends or Feathered. I smile and nod. It would appear I'm not the only person who likes to put things in context. The name is Piwacket. The nurse smiles and nods her approval. Great name. She walks out from behind the desk and gestures for me to follow. We make our way down the hall and turn into a room so festooned with flower arrangements that I worry she may have directed me to the hospital gift shop rather than Lido's room. Well, Lido, it looks like you have another visitor. This one is Piwacket. Oh, mercy. The nurse waves her arms magnanimously toward the man in the hospital bed. I mumble my thanks and move hesitantly toward the figure. Mitzi Moon, it's so nice of you to visit. I get up, but they tell me the legs have gone into early retirement, possibly permanently. I'm sorry, I mumble and avoid his eyes. I don't know what to say. I shouldn't have come. And she's just thinking that. Don't be sorry. Look at all the folks who care about me. Carefully gestures to the bouquets. I glance around the room at the overabundance of flower arrangements and realize how much this man is loved. How little my visit truly matters and how sweet it is of him to pretend that it does. I thrust a box of cho no. I thrust a box of fruity pebbles in his general direction and say, it's what Pie Wacket wanted you to have. <laughs> he laughs and then clutches his chest. Three broken ribs don't make me laugh. I'm so sorry. He gently lifts his arm and takes the box of fruity puffs. No need to apologize, Mitzi. I needed that laugh. And I really need this box of fruity puffs. As you can see, I have more flowers that I know what to do with. In fact, could you do me a favor? Absolutely. Can I get you some water or coffee? He grips his chest and chuckles quietly. Now you sound like Tally. We both laugh a little about that. I was actually wondering if you would take these flowers and distribute them at the pet cemetery. We have a pet cemetery? All I can think of is the horrifying movie, and I have great concern for my personal safety. See me to read my mind, he replies. It's nothing like the movie. It's just a lovely place where people can remember the unconditional love that their pets provided. The Penn Cherry Harbor Welcoming Committee and the Ladies' Luncheon League run a couple of fundraisers every year to pay the property taxes and a part-time groundskeeper. But I have no use for all these flowers, and it would certainly brighten up the place, at least for a few hours before the blooms. No. Oh, uh, yeah. Before the blooms freeze, but maybe you could get the paper to take some photos and then the joy will last forever. I'm speechless. I look at this man who may never regain the use of his legs and I can't comprehend how even in what seems like his darkest hour, his first thought is for others. A wave of guilt washes over me. <clears throat> Oh, shoot. <laughs> Wash us over me. Where'd it go? Oh, 
I'm so sorry, y'all. Okay, let's see. I'm speechless. I look at this man who may never regain the use of his legs, and I can't comprehend. Oh, I just said all that, didn't I? That's yeah, okay. Uh, what seems like his darkest hour, his first thought is for others. A wave of guilt washes over me. My self-absorbed, mi misspent youth can't be relived, but I'm absolutely going to distribute these beautiful flowers and set up a photo booth with the local paper, and then I'm going to drive to my lawyer's office and set up a philanthropic, phil philanthropic, organization. Finally, Mitzi Moon is going to make some attempt to leave the world a better place than she found it. Mitzi, everything okay? I surface from my existential dive and reply, I'm supposed to be here to cheer you up. I force a smile to my face and give my personality an, an injection of artificial sunshine. Lido tilts his head and stares at me wistfully. You don't have to use kid gloves around me, dear. I know the extent of my injuries, and I know the odds are not in my favor, but I didn't suffer any brain damage, or damn damage, and have full use of my hands and fingers. It will be an adjustment period as I get used to life in a wheelchair, but I can still practice medicine. I can still help all my patients. And that's what's truly important to me. I nod my head, but still can't find. <clears throat> my voice. I'm not going to pretend it will be easy. I know there are dark days ahead, but I'm not giving up. Giving up is a one-way ticket to somewhere I don't want to go. Lido, I'll absolutely take these flowers anywhere you want them to be, and if it's all right with you, I'll also, I'd also, like to find the person who did this to you. Well, now, he chuckles carefully, I've heard some mighty fine stories about, uh, about amateur sleuth Mitzi Moon. Seems like you've done more than your share of legwork for the sheriff. Since you came into town. When Tally was here yesterday, she didn't. Tally was here yesterday. She, she couldn't stop talking about how you'd helped Odell, Odell get to the bottom of Walt's murder. And even got some leniency for a little Diane. That's, I'm not interested in retribution or vengeance. But I wouldn't mind making sure someone has to face the music. Exactly what I was thinking. I slide a chair closer to the bed, sit down, and pull... Closer to the bed, sit down and pull out my phone in case I need to take notes. Tell me everything you remember, even if it doesn't seem important. As Lido relives the painful memories of the night, he was struck down. <clears throat> I keep a careful watch on my grandmother's mood ring on my left hand. Unfortunately, nothing in, in, in his tale offers any clue to what might have happened, and he seems to have no memory of the shape, size, or color of the vehicle that hit him. The doc had been looking down at his phone, searching for the right walk. Uh... Searching for the right walking home playlist when he stepped into the street without looking and was hit almost instantly. Instantly, Did the vehicle try to stop? Did you hear brakes screech? I honestly don't remember. But even if they had tried to stop with the snow... With the snow falling, the slippery roads, I'm sure they did everything they could. This might be what it's like to talk to the Dalai Lama. The man seems genuinely at peace with what happened. Can you remember anything else? The doctor here said I might be... 
missing a few memories. I did hit my head and there was a mild concussion, but nothing serious. There's a chance a memory or two may have been dashed away. Uh, dashed away by the pavement, but if I think of anything else, I'll for sure let you know. All right, I'll start poking them poking around and get these flowers transported over to the pet cemetery while I organize the photo shoot. I turn to survey the vast array of bouquets and mentally power through a series of options for getting series of options for getting them moved. Behind me I hear the sound of cardboard tearing plastic ripping and a loud crunch crunch followed by a satisfied murmur. I turn around just in time to see Lido reaching in for a second handful of fruity puffs. I can see why Piwacket loves these things. You'll give him my best, won't you? I absolutely will, gesturing. Mmm. Gesturing to the arrangements, I asked, do you want all of them moved or just certain ones? I'll keep this winter wonderland arrangement from Tilly, from Tally and Tilly. He points to the wonderful, uh, excuse me. He points to a beautiful selection of holly leaves, red berries, pine cones, and silver bells arranged around a snow globe. But all the rest of them are fair game, you know? I nod and begin making a rough calculation of how much space will be needed. And when you're talking to the paper, maybe you can ask them... Hmm. Lord, Lord, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> ah, fair game I nod and begin making a rough calculation of how much space will be needed and when you're talking to the paper maybe you can ask them to run an article requesting donations to the pet cemetery in lieu of flowers so we can prevent a second floral apocalypse he laughs at his own joke and chuckles and clucks no clutches his fractured ribs once more. You're not doing yourself any favors, Doc. I chuckle. I'm on the case. Having slowly come to terms with the benefits of my inheritance, I call the local florist and offer to hire him to relocate all the bouquets to the pet cemetery. They happily quote me a price and agree to handle it the very next day. My second phone call is to the local paper informing them of a wonderful winter photo opportunity, uh, opportunity and purchasing a half-page, half-color ad offering a reward for anyone who has information about the hit and run. Oh, shoot. To call in with T. I screwed up and went to the wrong page, but I'm back now. Uh, who has information about the hit and run to call in with tips with a note at the bottom asking for donations to the pet cemetery in lieu of flowers? That completes my transaction. Uh, shoot. Okay, uh, that completes my transaction with our local news outlet. Now it's time for me to finally sit down with my attorney, Silas Willoughby, who happens to be an alchemist and set up an organization designed to give back to the community, which I've decided to call home. And of course, we'll see. I'll see what he can do about getting a copy of the police report so that I can peruse the details of Lido's accident. Despite Lido's calm and friendly nature, the smells and sounds of the hospital are giving me a mild case of the heebie-jeebies. I better get, uh, I 
I better get started on these errands. You let me know if you need any more fruity puffs, all right? You betcha. Leto stifles a snicker and squeezes his ribs. And that is all. Chapter 3. Sorry about my sleeping sickness. Read y'all read myself to sleep. All right, squirrels. I hope you have an excellent evening. What's left of it or day if you see this tomorrow or whenever. I love y'all fine. Be sweet. Don't be ugly. Hope to see you tomorrow live at five. Bye.